Bible. We're doing the book of Proverbs. We had a really great prayer time and some interesting theological discussions about heaven. The book of Proverbs. We're continuing in the wisdom literature of the Bible. What was the first wisdom book we looked at? Psalms. No. Job. Job. Job is a poetic wisdom literature. And that's why it's placed where it is, right? Because remember, chronologically, it's probably more in the time of Abraham. But we are, the Bible's more divided in like historical books, wisdom literature, and then, um, and, and then prophetic, or not, or, um, yeah, books written by prophets. Um, and so we are in the middle of the wisdom literature books. The book of Proverbs. Who's read the book of Proverbs? Most of you. Cool. There's a cool reading plan. How many chapters? How many chapters are in the book? 31. And so this is a cool thing. If you, if you don't know what to read in the Bible, look at what day it is. What is today? The 11th? 12th? What is it? The 12th. You could read chapter 12. And it, 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 it's just a cool thing to, to, to do uh, if, you, if you'd like to have a little bit of an idea of reading plan. Um, the book of Proverbs isn't a narrative story. It isn't um, history, it's, it's a collection of seemingly sometimes random, like there are lots of different, just like little nuggets of wisdom, little sayings, little, little quib, quibbles, quips, and like, you know, like what are some of our modern kind of like proverbs, that, that things that we say that your dad or your grandpa might say to you. You reap what you sow. You reap what you Peter sow. Like, you well, that's a biblical like, too. The good book says this. Okay. Uh, who's ever heard of like, the early bird gets the worm? Yep. Uh, yeah, stuff like that. What are other ones mom, you've heard of? Treat others the way you no. want to be treated. Well, treat others the way you want to be treated. Also a biblical uh, biblical principle as well. Would your mom count? Yes. No. You can lead a horse to water, but you can't make it drink. Yeah. So, so these are kind of you can't teach an old dog new tricks. Yeah. So these are kind of common sayings that I don't. We don't really know where they came from, um, but they kind of are like little nuggets of wisdom. Like you know, like you can apply it to these different situations in life. Proverbs is full of these. Uh, they have the added benefit that they are godly wisdom. Um, that they, they come from God, from, from God's type of wisdom, and they're included here. Um, who is the wisest person, maybe, oh. in the Bible? Jesus! <laughs> besides, besides Jesus. Besides God. Solomon. Solomon. Solomon is most well known for wisdom. So, any guesses on who wrote the majority of this book? Solomon. Solomon, Solomon. correct. So, oh, it's already up there. Sorry. Solomon is the main author described in this book. However, he did not compile it. Um, this was compiled later by King Hezekiah. Um, so it was put together. So a lot of these sayings, when we get to the date, you know, we'll go there now. Um, audience, God's people. This is a general written to really anyone, but originally the Israelites. He wrote it for his own sake, and then later... Like Hezekiah was like, I'm going to make this something. I'm just curious. Maybe he was just I think these could have been written down. I think these would have been selected from a larger grouping. Like we talked about Psalms. There were other Psalms probably that existed. And then these were compiled. I think with God's help and direction, as we know, the Bible was inspired by God. He was involved in the, the compiling of this. But later King Hezekiah. So that's in um, 728 to 686 was his reign. He's credited with compiling this. So most of the, some of them are even older too, maybe older um, Egyptian. There's probably some Egyptian proverbs that are included in this uh, also. So some timelines put some of these proverbs back to like 2400 BC. Um, and, but mainly, mostly Solomon. So seven, 970 BC was his beginning of his reign. We usually... A lot of what I read said these were from the early part of his reign. Why do you think that is, if you know about Solomon? Because as he Ellie. got older, he got, like, sketchy. The older he got, the sketchier he got. <laughs> yes, it's actually true. Solomon, his, he, you know, his, his story, he inherited the kingdom from his father, David, who was a great king, the greatest king. 
But Solomon really got to bring the kingdom of Israel into its glory days, into its true peak. What, did, what else did Solomon build? The temple. He built the temple. And a really big house. So he got, and a, and a palace, and, and you know, Israel became the richest it ever was. People traveled from all around, like the Queen of Sheba, to visit. We talked about this, right? Um, just to see the amazingness of what Solomon had built and to hear his wisdom. Because at the beginning of Solomon's reign, uh, he asked God for what? Wisdom. God said, ask me for what you want that will help you with your becoming a king. And he asked for wisdom. What, what else could he have asked for? Money, money, money. Money, you know, money, money makes the world go round. He could have asked for power and authority. He could have asked for zeppelins. He could have asked for, I don't know, laser vision or the power of flight. Who knows? Um, but he, he at long life, he asked for wisdom, and God blessed him for that request. God saw that as a very good request, kind of an unselfish request, like power and money would be more selfish, make him great. But, you know, obviously the wisdom helped him be great. But I think he understood that to lead God's people as a king, he would need wisdom. So what is wisdom? Be wise. Oh, oh it's... Marshall. It's um, the application of what you know to your life. The application of knowledge, yes. It is the understanding. What are you going to say, Olivia? Well, I was going to say that too, but also knowing that um, you don't put to, uh, tomatoes in oh, the The difference between knowledge and, and wisdom? Uh, knowledge is knowing that tomatoes are fruit. Uh, wisdom is not putting it in a fruit salad. Yes. That it's the application of knowledge. It's the applying of knowledge to life. So you may know lots of things, but if you, you know, it's kind of like common sense or street smart, some people call it. Like the application, like how do you use your knowledge in the real world? Like you could have memorized a bunch of facts. You could memorize the whole phone book. Oh, you don't know what a phone book is, kids. I oh my goodness. Yes, we do. You, you do. Oh, okay. <laughs> We're not I haven't used a phone book in 15 years. I've seen you guys who don't know. No, and someone said they don't know what a dial tone is. Like, oh my word. Anyway, it's a bunch of information, but if you don't know what to do with it, it's kind of worthless, right? But wisdom is the application of that knowledge. Wisdom yes. is going to knowledge. When I was little, my grandma had this big, thick phone book, and for some reason, I love looking to it. Oh. All right, so Luke liked to memorize the phone book. No, wisdom is going to knowledge. Any kid here is going to memorize the phone book. It's going to be Henry or it's going to be Luke. All right, so... Um, when and where, early in Solomon's reign, before he started marrying all the foreign women, before he kind of took a downturn. I don't know, that's probably why they ascribe it to his early days, when he was full of the wisdom of God. And so, yes, I think a lot of these statements he probably said in places, and they were written down and recorded probably in random places. I don't know if Solomon ever compiled his own wisdom statements into this book. I don't think he did. He had an assistant with a quote book. But so maybe there were a lot of, you know, like the stories of like when the two women come to Solomon and, and say they're fighting over the same baby. And like, that's my baby. No, that's my baby. And he says, let's cut the baby in half. Uh -oh. And then that's it reveals the true mother of the baby because the one who doesn't, okay. isn't the real mother is like, sure. And she just doesn't want the other mother to have the baby. And the real mother's like, no, no, let the baby live. And, and it reveals, it, it's an example of the wisdom really? of God. Yeah. This is this thing that I, I say all the time. People are fighting for the living spot of the Hey, guys, one at a time. I say to people, all my siblings, if they're fighting for me, I say, well, just cut it in half. That's my wisdom that I know. My knowledge. Doesn't God. apply so great in all situations. It does. So, uh, when and where, early in Solomon's reign, when he was filled with God's wisdom. So, that's another reason why we know, you know, this is God endorsed wisdom because where did, what was the source of Solomon's wisdom? God. God, yeah. Um, again, compiled later by a King Hezekiah. Write this down, 728 BC. Oh, why did I miss that? I, I actually compiled added it later. Hezekiah. Um, if we have main characters, we're going to say Solomon because he's so prominent, um, but not really a character. And if you had characters, you kind of have um, hypothetical characters. You kind of have a son that this is kind of directed as my son, and, and here's wisdom. And, and so you kind of have a father, and then you actually have wisdom personified in a woman. So Thank late, we'll that, call Solomon. her Thank you. Lady, wi Lady Wisdom. Lady so you could also say, if there's characters, you could say a son, a father, and Lady Wisdom. 
Um, and so wisdom is personified. Do I just need there. to like add father to the next line? No. Oh, because you they're they're at the same level. They're kind of they're, no, they're, they're different. Cool. The father is kind of giving his son. This is the like a book. If your if your grandpa or your dad was kind of like, all right, son, it's time to be a man. Here's how to live life. Pastor it's kind Philip of, was writing. Okay, do you remember that? He had like a little black book, and he was like writing down things he wanted his kids to know. Yeah. So that's what this book kind of is. It's kind of aimed at that young person who's starting out in life, and and here's some helpful advice for life, um, which. Brings us, you know, to our purpose to teach people how to obtain wisdom and dis discipline, and then further to apply divine wisdom, God's wisdom, to daily life. Proverbs is a very practical book. It doesn't just talk about, you know, spiritual things, um, but it's spiritual things. the The fear of God is the beginning of wisdom. It's spiritual things applied to daily life. So it's a very practical book. A lot of the Bible, you know, you, you know, maybe just more spiritual, but I th but Proverbs is very practical. Like to like here's some daily advice, um, but it's the it's the spiritual divine wisdom applied to daily life. Now, there's one really important distinction I want you to know, because you do kind of got to read this book differently than other books. Um, a lot of times we read in the Bible and we read the promises of God, right? What are some of the promises of God? I will never leave you nor forsake you. I will never leave you or forsake you. What else? Some, any other promises of God? I will not fall the earth again like this. Oh, yeah, there's a covenant. Will, the covenants uh, of God. Make your like yeah, it's a covenant, yes. I will protect you. I'll protect you. So some of these principles that we see, like we know by God's character and what he's promised for his people, that he's coming back one day, right? And that he's going to restore... Uh, his kingdom, and that we're going to have eternity with him. These are promises of God, right? Mm -hmm. Now, Proverbs are not promises, okay? So when you read through this book, you can't read it like promises. Because you know? one says, train up a child in the way he should go, and when he's old, he will not depart from it. So uh, is a parent guaranteed, if they train up the child in the way they should go, that that child will never depart from what they've taught their child? No, that's not a promise. But is that... A, a good idea and a likely outcome. Mm -hmm. If a parent is a is a good teacher and trains their child up in the way they could go, they should go. Is that child likely to follow in that path? Yes, but it's not a guarantee. So here's the key: Proverbs is not promises, but it's principles. Okay, there's a lot of P's. Proverbs is not a book of promises, but it's a book of principles. So by following these guidelines in life, you're not guaranteed the exact same outcomes, but it is likely. It is likely the outcomes will be the same outcomes. But people are human, people have their own choices, um, so these things will not always play out exactly as Proverbs say, but regardless, it's still the right thing to do and to follow these statements of wisdom. So. Quick question, just Principles, right not promises. Is this, you're saying one through seven here, is that something for the purpose? You put it one dash seven under. Oh, I think that's one verse seven. Okay. Maybe. Fear of the Lord is the foundation of true knowledge, but fools despise wisdom and discipline. Sorry, I just needed to figure yeah. that out. I was like, is this really <laughs> seven chapters? <laughs> no, just, just that verse, which is kind of a, a that's the key verse. To this whole what? thing. Did you just give Spoiler. me that way? Spoiler. Keepers. I'm moving over. The fear of the Lord is the beginning of wisdom. And so these are, you know, but at the same time and they're practical, they're not just practical. It's not like, here's how to make money in the stock market. Like, it's not just like this worldly practical advice. It is divine, a w d divine truth applied to daily life. This is God's wisdom. Um, the best way to apply these would not be to, to you know, to just look for the, the hacks and tricks to life in this book, but to, from a biblical, from a God, following God, fear of God perspective um, to apply these to life. And that's, you know, that's a really interesting thing that I actually want to get more into the study of is the fear of the Lord. Um, well, we talk about this a lot and sometimes people downplay it by saying, oh, it's just a respect of God. It's just, you know, it's just another respect. And I think that's, 
the word fear kind of conjures up like, oh, we're afraid of God, like not necessarily, but yeah, God has, it's a, it's, it is identifying his authority that we serve a God who can send us to hell, right? Like that he punishes sin, that, that he does as he wills, right? We don't just serve a genie God that does whatever we want. We serve a God who is all powerful and all understanding and we should live in fear of God. Like, like, like a policeman, right? A policeman can give you a ticket. So if you see a policeman driving by, could, do you feel, feel a little bit of fear? If you're speeding, yes, right? You're like, oh, uh, if you're doing something wrong, right? <laughs> so it's that authority that that policeman has is, is kind of instills a fear in you. Should you live afraid of the police and like hiding? Well, if you're criminal, maybe yes. But if you're, if you're trying to follow after the law, you don't have to live um, afraid of the police, right? But you should fear their authority because they can make your life trouble, give you fines, arrest you. Yes? You can also say it's kind of like gravity because we're terrified to jump off a cliff, but we don't walk around afraid. That's a good, good thought. If we break its law, it will we live under the authority of gravity, under the rules of gravity, and we have to respect gravity or else we will die because we have to understand that what will happen if we jump off the cliff or, or build a bike jump too high, right? Or test this house. You can test it out. That's, that's a great thing. We live under the authority of God. So what's the counter to that? We can just view God as this loving, happy God that just is just like, forgiving all the time and never never says that sin is wrong right like there are two sides to god absolutely god loves us he loves us as his children but he's also an authority figure he's not just our best friend right and so this fear of god is the beginning of wisdom understanding that god has a law that he has truth he knows what's right and wrong and he wants the best for us like that is the beginning of wisdom i think that's a could be a really interesting study to understand Which it in shows a better way. your position, like the view of humility. The fear of God is the beginning of wisdom. It, it, you understand your place in life, that you are not God. You are his creation, and you are subject to him. So I think it's, it's the right, it puts you in the right position. So ultimately, if you don't have that figured out, this book wouldn't be that helpful. It's not just a, a book of hacks and tricks to, to getting by and getting rich in this life. It is subject to the wisdom of God, the fear of God, and the relationship with God. It's not independent of that. Um, not really main events. Again, this isn't a uh, narrative, but I kind of there's kind of different ways people have broken down. I, saw, I was noticing this different study Bible I was looking at has a bunch of different sections, but we'll break it down into three kind of general sections for you. First of all, wisdom to young people, chapters one through nine. Um, Mainly, like we said, directed as a father to a son. Here's how to, to get started in life. Here's how, to, um, here's how to be successful. My child, right? So verse two, chapter one. I'm sorry, chapter two, verse one. My child, listen to what I say. Treasure my commands. Tune your ears to wisdom. It's written in that way, like from a father to a child. So we call it a young person. Um, Trust the Lord with all your heart. Do not depend on understand in your own understanding. Seek His will in all you do. Um, don't be impressed by your with your own wisdom. Instead, fear the Lord and turn away from evil. Then you will have healing for your body and strength for your bones. Honor the Lord with your wealth, wealth and the best part of everything you produce. Um, then He will fill your barns with grain and your vats will overflow with good wine. My child, don't reject the Lord's discipline. Uh, don't be upset when He corrects you. Um, so very much written to a child. Do you see that that line? I just noticed it again. My child, don't reject the Lord's discipline. Don't be upset when he corrects you. What is that? Poetry style? Parallelism, Parallelism right? S two statements that kind of say the same thing in different ways. Kind of cool. So first section, wisdom for young people, chapters one through nine generally. Then we kind of have a section of 10 to 24, um, which is definitely identified as the, the Proverbs of Solomon is, is a heading to there, chapter 10. Um, but the other ones are ascribed to him too, so I'm not really sure. I have an idea. And is, uh, is wisdom for all people, 10 to 24. I just thought, like, if anyone has anything underlined, yeah. second, I'd love to hear. Like, I feel like these That's are so little bite-sized. Like, uh, look, look through the book of Proverbs. If you have any favorite Proverbs, maybe you can share them. Um, and then the third section we have identified by some people as wisdom for leaders. 
And so that doesn't just mean, it's not just an elusive group of people. Actually, everyone becomes a leader in some way of your family or at work. Like, there's people we end up leading. So, but specifically aimed at wisdom in leadership um, is the last section. And then the last two chapters are actually written by different guys. That's the Ag- Agor and Lemuel. Any favorite proverbs you have? Jessica. Well, I just have one. I underlined it because you learn stuff about yourself and you know that this is speaking to you. So this is Proverbs 10, 8. The wise in heart accept commands, but a chattering fool comes to ruin. So remembering that, like, someone who talks too much gets himself in trouble. Mm-hmm. That's good. That's like a preaching to myself. He's a chattering fool. Yeah, yeah I think the ones that, you know, will teach us something <laughs> may impact us differently. Je- Ellie. Um, Proverbs eighteen twenty one. Death and life are in the power of the tongue. Mm. <clears throat> Death and life are in the power of the tongue. Cool. Maya. Um, this one's like what we were talking about earlier. Like yeah, there's a little ton of sayings, like the pride before the fall. Mm-hmm. Sixteen, eighteen. Pride goes before destruction, and a haughty spirit before the fall. Yeah, pride. Which I feel like comes out in like when you're like sports teams, like we're gonna crush them today. We're totally gonna beat them, and then you get beat. You're like, oh, no, <laughs> like the team that said, "I believe yeah. that we will win," and they didn't win. Yeah. Yes, that yes. Was uh, Addie. I have two for Proverbs chapter sixteen, so verse four. The Lord has made everything for its purpose, even the wicked for the day of trouble. And this one kind of found me funny because Mom always talks about her gray hair. So this is verse thirty-one. Gray hair is a crown for of glory is gained into a righteous life. <laughs> nice. Yeah. Trevor. Uh, this is Proverbs three twenty one through twenty four. My son, do not lose sight of these. Keep sound wisdom and discretion, and they will be life for your soul and adornment for your neck. Then you will walk in your way securely, and your foot will not stumble. If you lie down, you will not be afraid. When you lie down, your sleep will be sweet. Nice. So keep wisdom close by around you or door. Wiley. I don't remember for sure if this is Proverbs, but it's like he who is wise is wise for himself. You can't explain the way you want. Look it up. Addy. Uh, this is chapter 27, 10b. It says, Better is a neighbor who is near than a brother who is far away. A neighbor who is near than a brother who is far away. Interesting principle, yeah. We, we've talked about that with neighbors, like in friends. It's like when you have a friend neighbor, it's just like so convenient to be their friend because they're right there all the time. Yeah, Corey. It, this is the last of the Proverbs, um, Proverbs 31, the same one. Um, it says, Give her of the fruit of her hands and, and let her own what's present in the gates. What verse was that? Proverbs 31, 31. The last of Proverbs. Yep. Yeah. I like that. Yes, and th- yeah. that last chapter is a kind of a famous chapter. It's it's of the of the virtuous wife the or the strong woman. Um, you know, again, kind of accumulates wisdom as a a, a woman character. It's kind of all contained together, but about specifically wife. about a, a woman and the choices she makes for her family. And it's a cool guide. I'm not not exactly what you have to be, but it's it's a cool cool goals. Uh, my favorite because it's funny, but also true. Oh, I know what well, there's two. There's a few that are funny. This one's, as a kid, was my funny. Uh, Proverbs 26, 11. As a dog returns to its vomit, so a fool repeats his foolishness. You ever seen a dog eat its own vomit? Yeah. So a fool returns. But yeah, like an idiot does the same thing over and over, right? <laughs> same what about the one by the corner of the house? Yeah. Better to live in a corner of a house than with a quarreling wife. Or something about a, a dripping faucet yeah, yeah, yeah. or something. Do you dwell on the corner of a house with a quarreling wife? Or do you dwell in the corner of a house with a quarreling woman in a white house? Which I, have you guys seen Fiddler? I was, guess I was most disappointed by how um, they depict the husband and the wife and how they basically don't get along. It's always bad. All right, we're going to watch the... Whatever it's called. Bible Project. All right. So that's the book of Proverbs. I like how they laid it out too. A little different than we did, but um, it's cool. How do we see Jesus in the book of Proverbs? It's a little, a little bit more oh, tricky. Yes, I read it just now. Yeah? Um, what is his name and what is his son's name? Thou canst tell. That's talking about Jesus. Who, who has ascended up to heaven? Who has gone down to the deep? That's in Proverbs? Yeah. Go to the Proverbs of Vigor. Oh, cool.
Cool. Um, so there's some there's some messianic ties. Um, that's neat. I I just put down kind of generally. I didn't really have anything specific. Thank you, Marshall. Um, even though Solomon was the wisest, he wasn't perfect, and he needed a savior. And really that even if you follow all these principles to the best of your ability, that doesn't get you to heaven. We still need a savior. We still need Jesus. So this is not the key to eternal life. Like even like following Proverbs to the best of your ability. Um, it's not the answer to everything. It's going to definitely help you in this world and in this life. But we still need a savior. We still need Jesus. Right, it so helps that's on our, earth, but it doesn't help you for eternity necessarily, right? Right, right. And, you know, it's the fear of the Lord, beginning of wisdom. It starts us in that direction of understanding. But it's not, again, without God, this book is also, you know, it's not just a hack on life, right? That for anyone. It requires a relationship with God, too, that we have through Jesus. Um, the key verse, we've hit that. The fear of the Lord is the beginning of wisdom. Fools despise wisdom and discipline. Timeless truth. Any thoughts on the timeless truth already up there? And I have the fear of the Lord is the beginning of wisdom. Any other any other thoughts of, on the timeless truth? I think that's the best summary of this book, but maybe you have another idea. Wisdom for life, timeless, I don't know. Are you raising your hand? No. So fear God and keep his commands. We're going to also connect it to our next book, which I'm excited about, Ecclesiastes. Easy Clasties. Easy Clasties. The can't name a child. That's the book of Proverbs. You can read it in a month if you just read a chapter a day. Thirty-one chapters. A chapter a day keeps Satan.